Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Create. Create on 115.2 Minecraft. That's right. And I'm going to be showing you today how you can make yourself a little contraption to do the gardening for you that requires absolutely no rotational force, just a bit of ingenuity. All right, so as you can see here, I have a rail cart set up. We're going, or a mine cart set up. We're going to be using this for sure. Uh, I am in creative mode during this, so at times I will be producing things in that manner just for the ease of showing you this demo. So as you can see here, I have a bunch of powered rails around here. You don't need to have as many as I have, and I've got this little minimal setup. It has an automatic docking station where it will offload everything here. It's pretty darn uh, cool, actually. I will show you how it works. Let's push the cart. It'll go around, it will dock here, pick up the entire farming device, and then it'll drop it off recircle and repeat and while it's dropped off any contents will be dropped in here i was experimenting with sugarcane just ignore that one <laughs> that's a little extra there but i've run this a few times you can leave it running if you so desire but obviously at some point this is probably going to fill up otherwise you can just turn that off and it will shut off all i have here is just a little bit of water underneath this area so i'm going to show you from the beginning i will leave a couple things in place uh, as I don't need the chest in place or any of this stuff, we're going to get rid of all these things here. Bleh. Now, I have a bunch of water here to represent an area that you will need for the structure to park. Because when it is docked, it will actually place these blocks in world and it will therefore be like you are stamping on your, your crops. It will destroy them. Seeds will be kicked out and stuff. It'll just turn into a dirt block. But uh, I do have hidden underneath the edges here, uh, just for reference sake, I've got some water just so that it can spread around to all of this. You can extend out as far as you want this way and as far as you want that way. And then you can just make your uh, contraption longer. Just make sure that the footprint, footprint that it has uh, has nothing of value underneath it specifically crops. Uh, in this case, I'm just using water because it just makes it easier to get under the machine if I need to do any adjustments. We're going to be focusing on this. The cart assembler is the heart, core, and everything that you really need for this to work. It's pretty darn basic now, and it looks a little different from it did in its 114.4 version of Minecraft, uh, of modded Minecraft. It now comes with this uh, little, little information here that the top is going to stick to things. The sides do not, uh, as opposed to the 114.4 version, which actually all three sides would stick to things. Now it's only the top which actually I find that quite nice. And a lot of the things in Create now actually come with this pre-knowledge uh, so that you, you can immediately identify, this is going to stick to stuff as soon as <laughs> it starts working. So if you give this uh, cart assembler a redstone signal, it will then activate uh, in a specific way. Let's, let's try and push this around here. Actually, it helps if I have something in place. Put this on top. You can see if it had a redstone signal, it therefore will... Uh, you know, it was, there we go. It's embarking, taking it off, and then it switches around. It then gives it the redstone signal and it will pick it up again and so on. So while the redstone signal is off, it, it, uh, pretty much will, will not do anything. This here is just a regular Minecraft detector rail. It's detecting the cart going by and giving it a redstone signal. I've got a powered toggle latch that automatically changes how things happen. Therefore, you can turn this on and off as you desire, but otherwise uh, I'm using this to just stop the cart because it'll just keep going around in circles the way I have it set up. So you therefore need to put some kind of contraption on here. You can use this for multiple things, not just farming. I'm just using this as a simple example. You can use this for uh, mining. You can use this for harvesting pumpkins and watermelons. You can use this for uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. But sugar cane, uh, just don't don't put the, the harvesting devices down at the base level or else it'll, it'll eat the sugar cane base. But um, let's get into some of some of the things we're going to need here. Linear chassis. This is going to be your bread and butter for attaching to this and making your, your device. So you're going to want to make sure that if you, if you look here, this top spot, not the sides, uh, that kind of thing is facing on the cart assembler. And it's the same here as it is on this side. So opposite sides are the same. It's like a drum if you will, you know, like a, a musical drum in a, in a way. Um, and then it's just got its like wood wrap on the sides. You're going to want that facing like that. There you go. So it kind of gives like a barrel effect. And then you're going to just want to connect onto that. Simple enough, right? 
And I have this being five blocks wide, so therefore I need to have it at least three blocks into the gardening area. Whatever block I put here is going to connect to the card assembler because, as you saw, it was already sticky. And if I continue forcing these to go around here, it will then connect all of these, like a connected textures mod, if you're familiar with something like that, where the, uh, like if I take some, what is it, uh, glass, uh, to give an example, we've got Minecraft glass and we've got the Create glass. Minecraft glass has regular textures that will have borders, whereas the Create stuff has connected textures. This is the same kind of thing here. It will actually connect these all together so that you know that they're all going to be moving. Now the next thing you're going to want to do, take a couple more of these, and if you click up here, it'll be the same facing as the one that you're clicking on. So you're going to want to click on some other block, like the card assembler, and it will actually therefore change its facing a little bit easier for you to negotiate. But if you do this before making these things adhesive, they won't stick. So you're going to need at least one slime ball. And then you can click on here just once, don't do it twice, because if you click once, it's fine. You notice up here, nothing has changed. If you click twice, it will actually stickify the entire block, and therefore you're going to need to probably replace that. So sticking those in there, sticking, whoops, uh, making sure to get the right angle in here, and then sticking some of these on here, we now have a much larger machine. If you want to test it out, it's a good time for it because nothing should go wrong. All you need to do is put down one of these power toggle latches, which by the way, when you put it down, it has an in and an out. So you're going to want to make sure that the redstone signal is coming in to this little arrow side and it will give a redstone signal out just like that. It doesn't work the other way around. <laughs> See, it, it doesn't, doesn't go that way. So just a heads up in case you weren't sure how this works. So cart goes over the activator rail, gives a redstone signal, changes things. Cart goes back over it, changes things. And this will just constantly keep rotating this latch back and forth, giving a redstone signal. So if you want to try it out, you can easily do so. Therefore, just by plunking a, a cart on there, and it should just take the entire thing around and then when it comes back through, you're going to want to shut it off. Just like that. This is why I've got a lever here, just so I can stop it and keep working on it. You can always test it like that. But you got to be careful. If you have something that is connected along the bottom here, like sand or dirt or something along those lines, you're going to be in trouble. And I'll show you why. Because I've got a wrench here. And if you look, you can see things that it's attached to. If I have, there we go, right here. This block, this block, and anything in front of it. So you you you, you got to be careful. May end up just going right along with it. So you're going to want to rotate those. You're going to definitely want to get yourself a wrench. A little bit more expensive because uh, you're going to have to have those uh, flat sheets and stuff. But you'll need that in most cases. I mean, the linear chassis is pretty, pretty basic and very cheap to make. And you're going to want to make sure these are all set at one, just so you don't accidentally grab the cart assembler, uh, any blocks that are like any in the entire area. Uh, and you're also going to want to make sure if you are using like a roundabout method that you don't place the cart assembler right next to the corner. Reason being is that as the cart comes around the corner, it will actually still be considered as part of the corner rail. And therefore it will place this entire contraption right along the rail. In this, uh, it'll be like it hasn't, it'll be like it's facing this way. The contraption will be running off the side and it'll place it before it even gets a chance to rotate. So you're going to want to make sure you're at least one space away from a corner when you do this. So you can now stick these on here. Once again, you only need a single slime ball. It's probably one of the best things. <laughs> you only need one. And you'll need a mechanical harvester. Get out of here. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> mechanical harvester, very simple, but once again, you're going to need to be able to make sheets with this, put a few on there and you're pretty much almost ready to harvest everything. I mean, this, this will work and it'll harvest everything for you, but you're going to want a way of offloading it. And that's where a transposer comes in. Transposers uh, are going to want to connect to some kind of chest. Now, if I put a chest here, it's going to leave the chest there. This will this machine will take off without it. Again, you're going to want to make sure it has something to stick to. Put the chest here, and then when it docks, it will offload all the contents for everything that's harvested down here into this uh, connected chest. And that that's pretty much it. It's really good, really really good. Uh, so 
the wrench, by the way. Um, it's needing gold sheets, powered toggle latch, just needing regular stuff, a mechanical harvester, just needing like some iron sheets and stuff. So far, you just need some way of smashing uh, blocks. Not so bad, right? Well, the, uh, I think, is it the cart assembler? No, that one's actually cheap too. It was the transposer was the expensive item because the extractors and funnels require brass sheets and electron tubes, which brass, then you need to have made uh, brass ingots, which I believe is like um, formed from zinc uh, is one of the ingredients you'll need, which of course requires other devices. But I mean, there are other ways that you can go about using this, but I just recommend a transposer because it's pretty easy to work with instead of having to uh, plonk on their extractors, which you'd still need the same ingredients for anyway. All right. So this is in place. I now have the chest up here. I have a little bit of some ripe wheat all around and I've got my cart. That's pretty much going to be it. You just give it some power, you shoot it around and there you go. That's it. And it docks and you can see that the, the stuff in there is coming out into the, uh, the connected inventory, which you can always have this then further sorted and so on. It's pretty good. If you shut this off while it's got this device on it, it still just sits there. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. So there's no, har no damage in that. You just need to push the cart a little bit, give it some power if you can, and it'll resume. And then you can stop it on the next turn. It's, it's no big deal. And like I said, you can expand this out very far that way, very far that way if you want. Just make sure you don't you don't have it around the corner here, and you give yourself a place that this stuff can sit. I, I recommend just water, so that like I said before, you can actually get underneath there if you need to. It's really really cool. I think I'll probably be doing a few more of these little contraptions to show people. Uh, obviously, you can do things instead of mechanical harvesters on here. You can always put on some drills or things of that nature. Uh, if you are harvesting some uh, like sugarcane, you're going to want to raise this entire linear chassis up a level, and then you're going to want to have the uh, the harvesters instead of down here up one level, and then you harvest from there and above. And that's pretty much the, all there is to it. It's really good, really simple, no mechanical, uh, you know, rotational force needed in this case. It's all kind of free power, just redstone. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, make sure to also keep villagers and other critters away from this because they could always jump in your cart at some point that, and then they're probably going to end up taking damage and dying. <laughs> you don't want your entire village getting killed. So uh, use the right kind of safety protection besides just plates and doors. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys all next time. Bye.